Hi, today we're going to be talking about ultralight jig heads for fishing anywhere in the world where fish eat small things. Now, over in the state of Wisconsin, the United States, where I grew up fishing, we've been doing this for over 40 years. Small jig head, small plastic. Over here in Asia, they've got this thing called ajing, A-J-I-N-G, where they're using small jig heads, small plastics. You ultralight and BFS guys are all over this. Now in the States, I mean, I've used this for panfish. I've used it in the springtime for walleyes. I use it for bass. I've caught small pike on them. I caught a lot of stream trout, some salmon on them. Amazing, okay? Over here in Asia, I caught triple tail, barramundi, uh, mackerel. Um, what is that called? Snapper grouper, the stuff we catch from shore, as well as croakers. They call them ikan galam. Ikan galama over here, some threadfin salmon. You get the idea. They catch a lot of fish, okay? But here's the thing. With fish with big teeth or strong mouths, it could be one fish, one plastic. That gets expensive after a while. The thing I'm going to introduce you to today is the idea of using fly tying materials instead of soft plastics, okay? We have a saying amongst the people that, you know, we tie our own jigs. We say anything plastic can do, hair can do better, okay? So as far as colors and such, you have to go with the local favorites, okay? In Madison, Wisconsin, where I used to fish panfish a lot, it was purple, just chartreuse and purple. Chartreuse head, purple body. Over here in the west coast of Malaysia, it's a lot of silver and white down here with red thread and uh, a glow bead. Now, I'm not taking the time to dye all these things glow, but it still works, okay? Over on the east coast of Malaysia, we're using a lot of green. Every locale has its favorites for, for their own reasons, okay? So, without further ado, let's get tying. Now, certain things to know. Fish can pick up what we call vibrational footprints. We've been knowing about this for the last 10 years or more, okay? So, because of that, if you take a look at a soft plastic, it's got a head and all these ridges on this Mr. Twister, uh, 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 Twister tail, okay? And that's supposed to try to make a vibration or something like that. But for some reason, the vibrational footprint left behind by a well-tied jig catches more fish. It gets more bites, okay? Not sure why, but that's just what a lot of us have noticed. So let's get tying. Now, the materials I'm using, this is Baitfish Emulator for the flash. Extra, extra select craft fur for the main body. Okay, now let's get tying. And again, I'm going to be using this in salt water. Uh, this is just a regular jig head. Okay, now one thing that the guys over in Wisconsin doing what I was doing in the rivers and stuff, you should check out this odging system because they also have these ultralight jig heads. Okay, but theirs have much stronger hooks. Okay much stronger hooks and uh, sharper. So if you accidentally hook those catfish and sturgeon that we so often run into, you have a good chance at landing them much better than with these the tiny jigs, jigs that we normally fish with because those are designed for actually for panfish. We, we kind of abuse it, okay? Now this, with a shot of super glue, it's not going anywhere, okay? Now baitfish emulator, Emulator, I'm only going to take a few pieces, three or four pieces here. Okay, this is going to be my flash on the side. So I'm tying it into the sides. I only need one, two. I'm taking two shank lengths, tie this into the side, four, flash. Now, if you notice, I am leaving. I am leaving the spare pieces on. I'm not, I'm not cutting them off. I'm actually going to tie them back later. Anything in fly tying, okay, uh, for salt water, you always fold back. Never tie in and then trim because fish will just yank it out. Okay, same thing on this side. I can estimate by my excess about how much I want here. So one, get this wrapped in. Even this out. Good. Okay. Tie this all the way forward. Now we're going to go to the craft fur. Okay. So a few tips on this. You don't need a lot. 
you don't need a lot. There's no collar on this. You, you, you can use minimal materials. I'm just using a tiny little pinch of extra select craft fur. Okay. Take that. And there's a, there are a lot of short fibers. You want to pull those out because you don't want unnecessary bulk on this. Okay. There. And you want to measure this based on how much uh, there is in front of the jig head here because remember we're going to fold back for a collar to get that nice footprint okay so here's the head of the jig here's the fur I'm going to move it one jig head width forward that's it one okay then two loose wraps okay there wrap that in I, I, you just use your thumb to adjust make sure it's exactly how you want it and then wrap forward to really tight to the head okay now let's get to my top or in the fly tying we call it the wing okay over here just a little bit because again there's no collar on this jig head so we can get away with a lot fewer materials okay Oops, started raining outside. Okay, now I can just measure this according to the excess I have on the white one. There we go. One, two, even this out. Hold it down, pull this down, make sure everything looks the way I want it. Yes, not bad. Okay, even it out. Okay, now first things first, I'm gonna take that flash, which is a lot longer than my crafter, pull it back, okay. Do the same on this side. Okay. Now I'm going to wrap forward completely all the way to the head of the jig. Okay. It's nice to have a rotary vise for this. Okay. Now when I pull all the materials back, Make sure the hook point is down. For some reason, if the hook point is up, I mercilessly hook myself. That really hurts. Okay, carefully pull this back so you don't nail yourself with that. Okay, build up the collar. Okay, and start folding this back. There we go. That's all coming. Okay, now all we have to do, whip finish. Okay, that's looking good. A quick whip finish. I always do double. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the first one. Second one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, when cutting, don't sit there with your with your fly tying uh, uh, scissors. Just make a small thing, go all the way up, pull tight, there. It pops right off. It's clean, it's strong, okay? Now, shot of super glue, here's a tip for you guys that are using, okay? Just a bit of super glue, quickly bring the bottle underneath and spread along the thread. That way you won't have too much super glue. There, that one is done, okay? Take that off, let it dry. Okay, now what about larger jig heads for bigger prey species? Okay, I use slightly larger heads for bigger prey species like uh, barramundi, triple tail, and such. This in, in Asia, this is a three gram. Okay, interesting note this tiny little ajing head here. Let me see if I can show this to you nicely. This tiny little ajing compared to this giant collared one, they're only one gram difference apart in weight, okay? That's how important materials are, okay? But I like this one. It's got a nice, big, beefy profile, and I can make a larger fly. Uh, fly. Now I can't pronounce my L's and R's, okay? Let me show you how I'm doing that. This is a little bit different, okay? This is still something that would fall under, you know, the uh, this ultralight fishing because these are light. But because it is larger, we're going for a bigger profile, I can't use this small thread. I need to crank down on that 
material a lot more. So I'm moving up to a three aught. Okay, three aught white is what I just happen to have. Honestly, I prefer red, but right now we are locked down in Malaysia and I cannot get out to get the stuff that I want. I like to handle the stuff um, in my hands before I buy it. So uh, no online shopping for me for that stuff. Okay, I, I really want to handle it and see it. So I'm going to wait till after after this lockdown is over and buy some more of the stuff that I want. Okay, so here we're ready to go. We're going to again start a thread base. Okay, all the way at the head. Now, this one is different. Double collar means double opportunity, okay, for making a very strong uh, jig. Okay, so I'm going to start the super glue up here. Okay. I'm putting a lot of glue and I'm going to wrap back on this collar just a little bit of super glue and then I'm going to continue wrapping the thread base over that glue and the thread immediately picks it up. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm going to make a really long presentation here. This is how we're getting how we can select out for bigger fish. Okay. Using more material extra select crafter again okay taking all that under fur out uh, this step is more important for the longer presentation than it is for the short one okay then I'm coming forward here okay wrap this to even it out a bit we're gonna need more material Okay, a little bit on each side, and that will do. Get this evened out just the way I want it. Okay, somewhere on this side. Uh, there we go. Fingers weren't working there for a second. Okay. Here we go. One, two. There. So we're leaving the head part a little bare. Okay. And for that, pink. We're basically doing a double layer fly. Now you notice I haven't put in the flash yet. Okay. So pink get to the base there we go get all this fluff out and voila in we go one two blend it in a little bit looking pretty good okay wrap this up forward almost to the head pull that back creates a little extra bulk okay try to clean that up a little bit you notice I'm not trimming I'm letting this bulk okay it's a little messy now and that's fine normally I'm a stickler for very clean appearance but this one is not necessary not necessary and then for the flash because it is a larger fly we need a little bit more stiffness I'm using just regular flasher boot. You guys that tie your own slow jigs and everything like that, you're very familiar with this stuff. Okay? Uh, sorry, sl not slow jigs, but slow jig assist hooks. Or uh, assist hooks for any type of jigging. Okay? I'm using full strands. Okay? I'm just going to use four pieces. You can use three or five if you're superstitious about numbers. Okay? Again, I'm going to go one, two, and a half. This one I'm going to go a little longer. Okay. Coming out to the sides. You notice how much access there is here. Okay. I'm going to tie this. Coming back a little bit. 
Okay. Come to this other side. Same thing. Just a few pieces. Oh, that's three. There we go. Same thing. Measure off with this. Oh, I need more. Just a bit. Okay, here we go. Look. Gentle. One, two. It looks good. Bring it back. Capture it. Okay. Come forward. Now we're going to add our front piece. Okay. More extra select, extra select crafter. Now we're going to use a lot more material here. Okay, and again, one, two, there, one, two, so you want to work in twos on this basically, okay, spread this out, I am going to need just a little bit more material here on the sides, okay, these bigger things, you really want to take your time and make sure everything looks nice because the fish are going to get a pretty good look at this it's going to be moving but they will get a good look at it okay tie this in okay spread that out there we go same thing here and now you might be wondering but now you're Crafter is kind of blocking your flash of That's okay. That's okay. The materials will pull through each other okay. Okay. Here, measure it out on the excess. Okay, whoops. Gently, gently. One, two. Even this out. Okay. Let's get the wing. Okay. Again, a thicker bunch. Move this. And get this wing tied in here. Measure out the excess. There. One, two. Okay. Adjust this the way you want. Okay, secure up tight to the head. It's important to get really tight to that head. Okay, now carefully pull the flash material back. Okay, and wrap it in. Two, same thing. Pull the flash material back and wrap it in. One, two. Now, with the hook point down, pull everything else back. Begin your collar. And these three hairs, pull them back. Okay, whoop. Okay, and keep going. Keep going in the collar. Just nice consecutive wraps. Don't get impatient and wrap back faster. You just ruined the whole thing. Okay, really crank down, discipline the, the, the materials. Okay, I have some stuff co coming errant here. So I'm gonna come here, just a little bit more there. Good, check. Okay, still this one is, so I've come further back here. Okay, good. Whip finish. Four, five, whoops, ah, come here, let's try that again, sometimes these mistakes happen, one, two, three, four, okay, again with the fly tying scissors, okay, don't clip, just make a small pull tight, there you go, okay, now super glue, 
thicker, but we're gonna is this thicker base, but we're gonna use the th same idea of getting the glue on the thread here, and then pulling this underneath. Okay, there we go. You just wanna get the glue on the threads. Try not to get them on the fibers. Okay, now. I can't show you the last step because it's going to take some time for this glue to dry. Okay, but the last step is to apply either an enamel or a vinyl nail polish over the top. Okay, but I can show you I can show you another finished jig where I've done that. Okay, you can see that here. I put pink nail polish. Okay, hot pink nail polish over the top of that just to really, really make sure everything stays uh, really well locked in there. So fish with teeth, you can't ruin these. Okay, well, I hope you learned something or you, you got something, you know, usable, useful out of this video. And I hope we get a lot more t chances to fish this year than we did last year. All the best.